Greetings in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. We're so excited to have you join us right here at the Mount Enon Missionary Baptist Church, 1501 West 3rd Street. Guys, we want to thank you and your family for being a part of our family. Today, as this broadcast begins, we want you to enjoy the Word of God as we also invite you to come in person right here at 8.45 a.m. Our Sunday school takes place and then at 10 o'clock a.m. our regular worship service. Join us for any one of our very blessed Bible studies Wednesday at 11 a.m. and Wednesday 6.30 p.m. along with Saturday at 11 a.m. Guys, we'd love to have you and your family join us here in Jesus' name. Good afternoon. I'm going to be reading from Psalms 100. Uh, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All that land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. It is He that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of his pastures. Yeah. Enter into his gates Come with on. thanksgiving yeah. and into his courts with praise. Yeah. Be thankful unto him yeah. and bless his name. Yeah. For the Lord is good. Yeah. His mercy is everlasting. Yeah. And his truth endure to all generations. Yeah. And God have a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word. I want to invite you to come as we experience Wednesdays in the Word at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. We're going to have the Word of God preached and taught by yours truly. On Wednesdays also at 6.30 p.m. until 7.45. Guys, we want you to come and join us every Wednesday. We look forward to having you come and share with us here at the Mount Eden Missionary Baptist Church every Saturday. From this day forward, guys, we look forward to having you coming to Super Saturdays. I'm telling you, we're going to have a worship segment on the Sabbath. It's going to be amazing from 11 a.m. until 12 p.m. Why don't you come and join me as these services begin in Jesus' name. Breaking news, family. Save the date. Watoto is returning June 27th. Those of you that were here in the past for the standing room only capacity performance, know that this is a big event and will be very exciting. There will be more information, of course, as we get closer. But keep in mind, we will need you to volunteer as we did in the, in the past. Church family, please note the church etiquette guidelines that are now in the bulletin and govern yourself accordingly. We appreciate it.
He's a good God. You can leave it. He's a great God. Can you say amen to that? Why don't you help me tonight as we make an effort to go into the Word of God and we want to have a discussion tonight about some of the elements of those elements of uh, pneumatology as we'll make an effort to bring some clarity to this message of the Holy Spirit. We want to talk about the person of the Holy Spirit tonight. He is most definitely a person. But you must understand that in theological realms across the world, you've got to understand that there is an argument that exists that uh, He, the Holy Spirit, is just some force that exists. Are you listening? Uh, yeah. uh, he, the Holy Spirit, has yet to be recognized as a person. So tonight we want to go to the extreme to argue here, and those of you who uh, uh, understand the importance of solidifying a, a case of some kind, you have to uh, act as if you were some investigator or making an effort to provide uh, evidence that would prove your case. Can you say amen to that? Amen. So in the process of making an effort to prove such a case, we go to the extreme to uh, bring about the Word of God so that there is some clarity uh, about who uh, Jesus Christ is, who God is, and most of all tonight, we want to deal with one of the first elements, if you please, that is most definitely uh, a controversial uh, element in our world, and that is uh, the Trinity. Yeah. When you look yeah. at the Trinity, there, there's great debate about uh, whether or not the Trinity uh, is, is a real uh, uh, existence or it is something that God promotes because you cannot find it in the Bible. Uh -huh. However, there is some uh, definition, there's an element that helps us to understand uh, and bring clarity to uh, this thought of the triunity. Come on, say triunity. triunity. The triunity of God. In other words, this word tri being, come on, three. Uh, it's composed of three. However, the word unity is, come on, self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Do you have a moment? Look at what happens. One thing you must understand that there are three elements here that, that are expressed in this, uh, particularly uh, talking about the Trinity. First of all, watch this, the A part of this says that there is one God manifested where? In three persons. Come on, you can read it, can't you? In three persons. The Father, come on, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, I need you to go because, again, if we are investigators, we are then responsible and accountable for finding information that would help us to solidify our case. Can you say amen to that? Amen. With no evidence, there's no case. Uh -huh. There's no argument. Can you yeah. say amen to that? Amen. So 1 Timothy 3.16 is one of the first elements, if you please, that would uh, solidify for us some of. Come on, say some of. Some this of. is just one of the instances that you can see the presence of and the manifestation of the Trinity in action, if that makes sense. Uh -huh. So it's, a, it's imperative for us to understand that uh, the, the triunity of God is so precise and potent that uh, the Trinity, you will never ever find that they've ever had an argument. I said you'd never discover in theological arenas anywhere across this country in this world where the Trinity or the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have gotten into a disagreement. Yeah. Are you with me yeah. here? In essence, the triunity of God is so precise that in every element, biblically and theologically, you'll discover that they are always, come on, on one accord. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you all have time tonight? Yeah. Yeah. He says, watch this, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Watch this. God was manifest where? In the flesh, then justified in the spirit, and seen of angels, come on, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Are you with me here? Yeah. This yeah. is one of the imperative elements that you need to see about the existence of God, because listen what happens. 
You must understand that Jesus, <coughs> on every account that he had the opportunity, I express that Genesis to Malachi is a dispensation. Somebody say dispensation. dispensation. When you look at the word dispensation, you need to say that this word dispensation is equivalent to a time frame. Between, come on, Genesis to Malachi, you'll discover that God is the main character. Are you with me here? However, when you get to Matthew, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all point, come on, to the existence and the popularity of Jesus, come on, and he thus becomes, come on, the main character. However, from Acts until this very day, you will then discover that the Holy Spirit is now the one who is considered the main character because it was Jesus in every instance that he spoke. He says to his disciples, I will not leave you comfortless. He says, I'm going to send you, come on, the comforter. I'm going to send you he who is able, are you with me here, to carry you through. However, look back, you'll have to go back and search the corridors, corridors of your historical ability, if you will, just uh, scrape your theological uh, uh, walls of your mind and discover that even God, somebody say God, God, God even allowed, watch this, his voice to be the, 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 the voice of introduction for his son, Jesus. Y'all yeah. Yeah. missing me. Yeah. Every one of the prophets who prophesied, they all prophesied about the coming, come on, yeah. of Jesus Christ the Savior. Yeah. Which is existential proof that the Trinity and the triune being of God is evident. They have a specific, come on, and a precise and concise plan. Why? It's because they all point toward the same uh, end. Are you with me here? They all point toward the same success. Are you with me? So they have what is known as, come on, help me say, triune being. I think the term triunity more clearly indicates the three-in-one aspect of the Godhead. Are you with me? So in other words, watch this. There's no way that your kidneys can decide to take vacation. Y'all real quiet. There's no way that your, that, that your liver can decide that it's not going to function properly and the body and the success of the plan or the providential plan be uh, followed through. In essence, everything within has come on to agree so that there can be a, a, a successful, come on, end to the story. Does that make sense? Third of all, I need you to look at this because this is a very significant piece. And we got stuck here this morning. We couldn't go past it. Here it is. In Hebrew, the singular word for God is what? El. El. You see it, don't you? E-L. However, the dual tense of, of, of that same word, come on, it still points back, come on, help me, to God. However, this word right here, E-L-A-H, Elah, are you with me, or Elah, is not the word that the Muslims use, Allah. It is not that word, are you with me here? However, it points, come on, back to God. In other words, the word El in the Hebrew is the word that talks about what? God. However, the word Elah is also a word that talks about God, but it is an Aramaic word. Are you with me here? So these words are considered, come on, synonymous. Are y'all in here with me? So what happens is, is that there has to be now an identification because you see God standing alone by himself. When you see El, you see, come on, God by himself and God alone. When you see Elah, watch this, you see, come on, God and God alone. However, when you see Elohim, when you see Elohim, watch this, it is then an indication of three or more because the word Elohim is used to translate God, watch this, however, it translates God with others. All right, amen. All right. <sighs> Genesis 1, when you go back to read in the beginning, when God began the creation process, you will discover that God, watch this, according to the text, when you go and research in your strong, concise, uh, 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 what you call that thing, uh, uh, concordance, you will discover 
that the word God that is used in there is a Hebrew word that refers back to Elohim. And Elohim is the word who talks about the plurality, come on, of God. So then we see with our own eyes that God, when he did the work that he did, it is evident on every side that we can look at the story that he did the work, however, he had somebody with him. Yeah. And every way you look in the Bible, when it refers to God, guess what? It was not considered angels because guess what? When you get down to verse 26, and I wish we had time to read it. When you get down to 26, you'll discover that God says, God says clearly, he says, we are going to make man how? In our image. Are you with me here? Which means that that then excluded the angels. Y'all ain't said nothing here. Are you with me? So, so what has to happen is, is that we must understand that the Trinity, the triune being of God, is always going to line up with God's providential and divine plan. Does that make sense? So when we talk about the Holy Ghost, we talk about the Holy Spirit, there are some very significant details that everybody in this room needs to know. All right. First of all, when you talk about the triune being of God, guess what you got to do? You have got to solidify in your own mind, write it down somewhere, text it to yourself, and you've got to come cognizant of this fact. Second of all, guess what? The, the Holy Spirit is a person. Uh -huh. yes, Absolutely. You see, the Holy Spirit, come on, has to be identified as a result of what we just saw. God, Elohim, expresses that in the beginning, from the beginning, somebody was there. Amen. Are you with me here? And identified in that text. However, guess what? It must be understood because many people would declare, well, you know, God does not have a physical body. However, he made us in his image because we, too, are triune beings. We are tridimensional. Every man in this room has body, spirit, and soul. Are you with me here? Every man, woman, boy, or girl in this room has what? Body, come on, spirit, and soul. Does that make sense? Yeah. So he made us in his image. And watch this. The Holy Spirit is thought by some to be an essence or power of God rather than a separate person. Because, watch this, you'll have to go in and look at these elements. And you've got to decide as to whether or not you believe what you're looking at. Here it is. When you look at the word ruach, somebody say ruach. ruach. You look at the word ruach, the word ruach simply means, come on, help me say wind. wind. It simply means breath, if you please, the air. It talks about the wind. However, you can look at this word that is again synonymous. The, the, the word in Hebrew is ruach that talks of the spirit of God. But then there's another word, pneuma, in the Greek. That talks of God. Are you with me here? And uh, it is it is very important that we understand that it means wind or air. But because we are Christians, because we believe in Jesus Christ, and because we believe in the triune being of God, we know within our spirits and in our minds and our souls that he, the Holy Spirit, come on, is a person. Yeah. 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 Are y'all still with me? Yeah. So if he be a person, that means that we have to be then cautious as to how... Uh, we deal with him. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Because one thing about people is, guess what? You can hurt people's feelings. Yes. Come on. People have emotions. Uh -huh. People have feelings. Am I right about it? Right. So we need to make sure that we're very careful and cautious as to how, are you with me here? We treat a person because you must understand, come on. The next element is, is that guess what? You got another piece where you at? Uh, she's listening. She's listening. All right, good. But anyway, the Holy Spirit can receive treatment as a person. Y'all still with me? All right. He can he can receive treatment as a person. Am I right about it? Does that make sense to you? So so what happens is is guess what? You must understand and realize and recognize that He, the Holy Spirit can receive treatment as a person, which means that we need to be cautious as to how we, come on, conduct ourselves one with another because everybody who is a believer has him 
on the inside, hopefully. Are you with me here? And as a result of that, we have to be very careful that we do not, come on, uh, offend uh, yeah, the him that's in others because he is being represented by us. That's right. That's right. Y'all quiet. He is represented by us because he's in us. We then become his representatives. And if we become his representatives, guess what his main objective is? Is to get our will to become, come on, or rather his will to become our will rather than our will becoming his. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? His everyday, his everyday thrust is to, to break us from our habits. To break us from our habitual thrust. Are you with me here? And we need to understand, there it is. Watch this. The Holy Spirit not only can be treated as a person, but guess what? The Holy Spirit has the characteristics of a person. Let's look at it. Let's go into 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And verse 10. Are you with me? You there? Yeah. Listen to what happens. He goes on talks about it and says, you just write. He says, God, but God rather, has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Why? It's because the text says, I didn't make it up. It says, for the spirit does what? Search all, all things, yea, even the deep things of God. Are you with me here? Yes. Yes. Come on, look at this. Come on. For what man knoweth the things of man? Are you with me? Save the spirit of man, which is, come on, in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but who? The spirit of God. Does that make sense? So it further uh, uh, provides evidence that he and God, come on, are on the same page because he is then aware, he is cognizant and conscious of God's ultimate plans. Boy, I wish you had somebody to help me. He is, come on, he is conscious of God's ultimate plans. What does that mean? That means that when God does something, he always allows, come on, his spirit before anybody else can get it. His spirit already knows it. Before he gets ready to regulate the minds of those of us who need regulation, come on, he allows his, come on, his spirit to know what he's going to do. Why? Why can you say that? Here it is. It says in the beginning, watch this, if you go back to Genesis 1 and 1, you'll discover that God said a series of let there be, let there be, and let there be. However, guess what he does? When he says let there be, let there be, and let there be, the Ruach, watch this, was represented as the wind or the breath of God, and the Ruach, the spirit of God, Went out into, y'all ain't saying it here, into the midst of nothingness and did whatever God said, let there be. He, y'all ain't saying it here, and it was. Are you with me here? When God said, let there be, the spirit went out. Y'all real, y'all missing it. He went out and did whatever God said to do and look back. Look at what God does. He looked back. He was talking to somebody and he said, and it was, y'all ain't saying it here. It was good. Have you ever had a dog, and I don't wanna I don't wanna belittle the Holy Spirit, but have you ever had a dog that's ever done something that was really good and followed your instructions? Y'all ain't saying on here every now and then what you would do, you pull somebody your pocket or in your hand, you would say, Come on, add a boy, something you provide something to make them know that that was good. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So watch this. We realize that he, the Holy Spirit, is a person. He is then represented as the breath of God and the voice of God. And as a result of God speaking, the Holy Spirit goes out and accomplishes the work. And every time God speaks, there he is doing whatever God said because he's a part. He's an intricate part of God's providential plan. That's right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when he's getting ready to do something, guess what? We are, out of all of God's creation, we are the most, write this down, we are the most contrary. When God speaks to the water, guess what? Waves begin to rumble. When God speaks to the moon, it shines at night. And very seldom does it come out at a time that it shouldn't because eclipse only comes so many seasons. Y'all quiet about it. 
Are you with me here? And not just that, but uh, listen here. Every element that God has made has kept its original uh, uh, state. Watch this. Rocks are still hard. Water is still wet. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. But we as men are the only ones that tries to defy God's expressions. Why? Some of you in here done tucked it. You done nipped it. Y'all ain't talking to me here. You've gone to every extreme. If you thought you were too dark, you tried to uh, bleach it. Come on, say amen. We are the only elements in God's creation that is not following through. Hey, this is what you got to understand. That when God made you, he made you in his image and he made you perfectly. That's why you got to begin to understand that when God made you you can't rely on what people think about you man you got to make sure that you know that listen God made me and because he made me I know that he has me come on in his in his best he has my best interest at his at heart when are you going to get it? Stop allowing people to downgrade and downtrot your spirit. Stop becoming discouraged as a result of what people think they know about you. You begin to realize that you are made in the image of God. And it is only God who can judge and change the substance of where you are and what you are. Does that make sense, church? So watch this. The spirit of God is so strong and potent. He gives us what we need in order that we can be begin to be successful. Guess what? we got to recognize him as such. He searches and has knowledge. Are you with me here? Yeah. He searches. He searches the, the, the content and the intent of the heart. Does that make sense? Yeah. Not just that, but watch this. Let me tell you what else. He is so good that he, the Holy Spirit, does, even in this season, what God tells him to do as it relates to providing gifts to his people. Let's go. Evidence. You got it? 1 Corinthians 12, 11. Listen to what happened. But all these work it that one and the self same spirit, spirit dividing to every man severally as whatever God decided for you to have, guess what? That's what the Spirit of God condones in your life. Whatever God has orchestrated for your world, God gave it to you. Everybody in here is not a mathematician. Yeah. Everybody in here is not a good singer. Yeah. Come on, everybody in here is not a good artist. Mm -hmm. But whatever gift the Lord has given you, He has given you, come on, by His Spirit. Yeah. Are you with me here? Yeah. So what we have to do is we have to make an effort to now introduce ourselves as what God has made us. But here's what we also have to do. We have to invite the Spirit in, and when we invite Him in, guess what? We need to be very careful because, again, He is a person. At some point, you ought to show some hospitality. Yeah. Have you ever thought about that? That the Holy Spirit is coming by today? Yeah. I mean, have you ever had guests that you were excited to have? You went in and found snacks. Come on, you went and found elements. You put out the best of China. Come on, say amen, somebody, will you? You began to perfect the environment. And guess what? I discovered that God does not, he, the Holy Spirit, does not dwell in an unclean place. Oh, y'all ain't saying here. Which means that everybody, regardless of whatever your problem or your dust on your furniture may be, everybody has to clear off the dust in order that he feels welcome. Y'all quiet about it. See, we want to talk about the dust of others, but I got news for you. If you got dust, dust is just dust. And all dust, watch this, if it's dust, watch this, it's offensive to the Holy Spirit. It needs to be cleaned up. Come on, somebody lift your hands and say, clean me up, Lord, clean me up. I'm one of those ones, clean me up. Are you with me here? We extend our Christian sympathy and prayers to those who have lost loved ones. The sick and shut in can be found in our bulletin. If you missed any important events or information, announcements can be found in our bulletin, FLC foyer, or the marquee out front on our Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube.